storytelling. It's in our blood. From the dawn of humanity, we have been a people of storytellers. Since we first looked into the heavens, we have brought down with us a kind of stardust, a magic, the magic of storytelling. We gazed in wonder at the stars and treated them like gods. We used the world and the animal kingdoms around us as inspiration to create epics such as Gilgamesh, the world's first story. Oral storytelling is deeply embedded in our shared humanity and still runs its course in the nomadic peoples remaining today, such as the Berbers. Authors then are our first and longest serving professionals, entertaining us with rich fabrics of spoken and written beauty. Nearly everything we hold dear in our culture is permeated by stories. Whether it's the fantasy epics I love, the movies and TV we binge within the comfort of our own homes, the poetry of rap, the lyricism of music. Yes, even the Fifty Shades of Grey is out there because somebody's got to reach those fine folks who find their comforts exploring themselves within those dusty pages. These are all carrying on the grand tradition of storytelling, implanted since the beginning, passed down from generation to generation. It will eventually outlast us all. But it is all storytelling in particular that has captured the public imagination. With audiobook sales and podcasts booming, many yearning for a simpler time. Perhaps the time has come to more fruitfully return to that grand tradition of old. My name's Matt, also known as Miggins, and today I'm going to be briefly exploring storytelling and its connection with us. Why publishers as the vanguard of such an esteemed profession need to up their game to match the work of independent authors who are killing it right now. Now before we begin, may I just remind you to please hit the like and subscribe button as well as the bell notification if you like what I do here. This one's a little different to my usual content, however I really wanted to explore this topic in a slightly more profound way so I hope you'll excuse my indulgence. If there is to only be one more tale tonight, let it be the one about the storyteller who changed her fate with her fables. Let it be a story about stories and the power they have to sway mortal hearts. The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah The Stardust Thief is a book all about the power of storytelling. It is an inspired debut loosely based upon The Thousand and One Nights. Now I'm only 20% in at the moment, but so far I found it to be a love letter to the oral storytelling which likely first took place in ancient Mesopotamia. It is filled with recognisable characters you'll love like Jinn, magical artefacts, the 40 thieves, and most importantly, a real sense of wonder. Now, you know when you find a book that takes you back to those early childhood memories of stories of adventure, of daring do, of heroes and villains, and of reading late into the night, eyes wide with curiosity at the wonders within, campfire horrors with friends and their dads on the scout camps, parents making up fantastical stories to regale you every night. Well, in my case it was my dad telling me about his trip to the shop and what he brought because his imagination was not all there, but I think we could skip that fact in favour of the romantic ideal. Now one of the first experiences I remember is listening to The Hobbit, as well as the Enid Blyton stories that my mum introduced me to. These all sowed a seed in me that started me on my path to my love of stories today. From then onwards, I often carried a book to school with me, although Oliver Twist did defeat me, despite me now loving chonkers, so... I guess Mr Dickens won in the end. Quick shout out to the Alex Ryder books and the kid who told me I was too young to read them because look at me now, I'm an 100 subs booktuber. No, <laughs> Yethal catharsis aside, it is those memories of listening in anticipation as your favourite character is in danger from wargs or a mysterious gold ring is found. 
you've got big battles that grip you, or it could be you're solving murder mysteries in a quaint seaside town, or a man with a moon for a face, or tales of dragons and fairies, lions and tigers and bears and... No, I, I already did that joke. These are the moments we never forget. The moments we chase again and again as adults. We laugh and we cry along with our favourite characters because they are our friends. They're real to us. From our childhood, they have helped form us and guide us into the people we are today. I know I have certainly been transformed by my friends within books. Such as the power of storytelling in a world that sometimes lacks character. It is these feelings that reading The Stardust Thief has drawn me back into, reminding me of that, that feeling of a master bard spinning their tail. A real life magic indeed. And it was The Stardust Thief that has led me to gather my thoughts on the state of modern publishing. Now, I'm not sure about you guys, but to me it kind of feels like traditional publishing in general has it's just lost some of its magic in the last few years. Reading The Stardust Thief has reminded me some of what has faded for me. Now, by no means are we running out of stories for there an infinite number of ways to invent a new world, new characters, to make me cry. But publishing has become more... corporate. <sighs> Talking specifically about the fantasy genre, it feels like Trad is often trying to chase the next Sanderson or Martin. Now, before you get your enchanted kitchen utensils out at me, yes, I am a huge fan of Brandon Sanderson, and this is not necessarily a bad thing. My favourite book in the world is Oathbringer, a book that for me represented some of the very best the fantasy genre has to offer. An intensely emotional journey, eloquently exploring mental health, and the redemptive power within each of us. Crying at 4am, those are the things I remember from Oathbringer. However, the problem is when everybody is trying to be Nick Sanderson. It's like if everyone wanted to be the new Freddie Mercury. You'll find one Adam Lambert and 99 tribute act wedding bands. Now, that isn't to say any authors are poor imitators at all. In fact, I think fantasy is at some of its most inventive and diverse in its long and storied history. However, the trap publishing world seems to focus a lot on one thing and one thing alone. Shmoney. Now where the forefront of fantasy is at the moment, in my humble opinion, is in the independent arena. Take you to where we are today, we're going to have to take you back in time just a little bit. So welcome to the 90s. This is the era of Dotted the Sheep, Mickey the Mouse's Clubhouse becoming a Hollywood funnel. Oasis going off their nut whilst making some of the best music of all time. And whatever the hell these haircuts were. <laughs> I'm glad I caught the tail in that one. Oh, and I couldn't forget this guy called Jeff who works in his parents' garage. My name is Jeff. If you know who Jeff is, you'll probably be thinking supervillain origin story. And you wouldn't be wrong there. However, that isn't to say Amazon are totally evil overlords intent on enslaving humanity to enable one insecure man's wet dream to fly to the moon. Only 99% at a guess. Amazon arguably re-democratised storytelling, putting the power to publish back in the hands of the people. Admittedly, it was just to slowly take it away again, but for all its ills, Amazon has revolutionised the book industry as a whole, and I know many authors grateful for its service. Where previously publishing was mostly a middle slash upper class white man's world, Amazon enabled the dream that anyone could tell the story burning within them. We were not beholden to the gatekeepers at the big publishing companies, and has actually forced them to compete with increasing diversity, which is a fantastic thing for a notoriously homogenised industry, with fantasy in particular known for being quite, how do I put this, uh, white and uh, medieval. Was the medieval era really something we wanted to replicate, guys? Just putting that one out there. Now, to return to seriousness for a moment, this 
It's what stories were always about. Connecting humanity through our shared love of storytelling. Bringing new ideas, revolutionising society, having the important conversations society isn't always willing to have to bring them into the public consciousness. Now, I'm going to leave you here with this quote from Peter Forbes as we end with publishing on the precipice of a new dawn of renewed storytelling. Stories create community, enable us to see through the eyes of other people and open us to the claims of others. Now, I hope that I'm able to start a conversation through my words about what the true power of storytelling is and how publishers need to do more to recapture that although I suggest waiting for part two to hear my complete thoughts. Thank you for watching. Most importantly, keep those stories burning because that's what we were made for. We were made to share as humans, to share the stories within us, to connect everyone. Until next time. Mm -hmm.